Another observation I'd like to make on the John Bonet Ramsey murder case, the unsolved case from 1996, 1997, is that this theory, this observation, brings the blame, the perpetrator, to the inside of the house than the intruder theory. I support more the in-home assailant than a intruder assailant. As you know, there are two camps and intruder or inside of the home. So the observation I'm talking about is the fact that JonBenet, after she was tied and perhaps strangulated or partly or partially strangulated with a string or rope using a garage, the assailant, the person that apparently was doing this, basically struck JonBenet in the head with an object. It's a blunt object appears to be with an extreme amount of force. And remember, this happened between the time that the Ramses fell asleep, went to bed more or less around, I believe it was uh, almost 11 p.m., and the time that Patsy Ramsey found the notes, which was just before 6 a.m. So there is a period of about six and a half hours between when the Ramses allegedly fall asleep to when she, Patsy Ramsey, found the ransom letter. So that's not a whole lot of time and again I want to observe that the assailant struck a child with extreme force and this is evident because of the autopsy uh, where they found a gouge, a break in the child's skull and it matched something with a square head or the part of the object that struck her was had a, a square or flush end to it whatever it was some people think it was a mag light flashlight one was pictured in one of the photos taken by the police i'm not sure if it was the same day the day after whatever it was uh, shortly after the crime it was one of the crime scene photos where a mag light flashlight was pictured on top of a table the origin of this flashlight is fuzzy at best some say it didn't belong in the house anyone from the house i think they basically say they that's not theirs that's john or patsy ramsey they a bit i i think they said that that was not their property it could have been a police officers that carelessly left it on the crime scene as they committed a lot of mistakes that may have been one of them during uh, and after the investigation, they committed many, many mistakes. That may have been a very blunt and leaving police property on a crime scene for it to be pictured with every other piece of evidence. But it's something that cannot be dismissed. I mean, we must take into consideration that it may have been the assailant's weapon or the assailant's property, whether it was from in or outside of the house. But I believe this action, this occurrence of the child being struck with this blunt object puts the likelihood of the crime being committed from someone inside of the home a little more likely I believe than someone from outside because for one uh, the assailant appears not to be aware or worried or did not care about being found out discovered at the moment uh, some may argue that it may be a very disturbed and reasonless or mentally disturbed or mentally challenged assailant it could be that that did not care wasn't aware of being discovered if he or she did that or struck the child with such force because of course that is going to make quite a bit of noise striking someone in the skull with a blunt object with that much force is going to make a very loud noise the object itself the bone crashing and breaking as you hit the strike is going to make noise although there is a chance that the assailant may have been covering the child trying to muffle the sound trying to quiet the sound from the strike with some sort of blanket with some sort of pillow or whatever it may be that may have been the case but i don't believe there is evidence of anything being used to cover up the child as she was struck meaning 
fibers perhaps on the flashlight which is about the only object that they believe may have been used that is the object that, that was pictured or found of course there may have been other objects that the alleged assailant may have used and taken with him or her as he or she exited the house escaped made an escape and let me remind you there is no evidence of people or anyone making an entrance to the house and exiting the house the evidence that has been put forth is very weak and very flimsy at best there was an open window cracked window on the basement area i believe and admittedly by john ramsey he broke it weeks weeks before i believe and to gain entrance to the house because he locked himself out at one point and other than the window being broken and open it was a very small window there was no real or no other evidence other than a suitcase being placed right below the window as if for someone to step on the suitcase and climb onto the window however that is very unlikely one because there were no footprints on the suitcase not to my knowledge there were no indications that the suitcase would have provided support because the way it was placed instead of being leaned against the wall flat it was placed with its uh, narrow side against the wall meaning that it would have been very unstable to step on that suitcase and climb onto a very narrow and small window also there was a spider web on the window that appeared to be a lot older than one day or even two and that right there is evidence that no one had gone through the window because it would have very likely disturbed or destroyed that spider's web as they exited or entered from the window it was again a very narrow window Window. Is it uh, possible that someone may have come in and out without disturbing that spider web? Yes, it would be possible. It is within the realm of possibility, of course. It cannot be dismissed, but it is very unlikely, I believe, and I think many experts believe this as well. So that theory is quite flimsy and likely of someone climbing in and out of that window. But back to my main point, observation about the strike and the noise that it would have caused. For one, the person that struck the victim wasn't worried about discovery because if he or she was they would have not done such thing and that just increases the chances of being discovered many many times so that brings the likelihood of the in-home assailants a little larger a little more likely another thing that helps this theory that aids to the likelihood of this theory i think also is that jambonet was put to bed with a hair bow that would not be very likely that her mother would put her to bed with this hair bow one that she wore i believe to the the christmas party i believe the night before also another thing that puts the in-house assailant theory in a little more likelihood is the fact that patsy ramsey had the same clothes as the night before that morning which seems to suggest as other people have brought it up this is not my observation but people have brought up that well, it is very unlikely that she would have done that she would have put on the same set of clothes as the night before is it possible yes of course it is she may have in a hurry put on the same set of clothes because it was right there visible readily available after the discovery of the notes again she was very frantic very desperate at that moment apparently as you can hear in the recorded 911 call it is very hard to believe that she is in fact faking that tone of voice and that frantic voice and demeanor that she displayed during that call if you've ever heard it you would know what i mean is it possible again yes it is very possible however i don't believe it to be likely that she would put up that type of show when she knew of the plot the cover-up the crime itself the situation itself if she was such a bloodthirsty and cold-blooded killer i don't believe she would put that show and i don't believe she would have put such show and again that takes credibility away from the in-house intruder in-house theory in-house assailant theory unless of course she was never aware of the crime committed by someone in the house that is a likely possibility that someone else in the house such as her husband committed the crime without her knowledge i am not saying i support that theory 100 but it is 
within the realm of possibility. Is it very likely? I don't believe so. Is it somewhat likely? Yes, I believe so. Somewhat likely. And again, the strike would have created a noise that would have likely, I believe, woken up the Ramses. Alerted them immediately and presumably would have had Patsy or John or both to go investigate, to go at least check on their children, to go see what caused such large and big noise. And the assailant may have been discovered. They may have been, who knows what, some sort of fight, altercation, who knows what could have happened. But the assailant may have been discovered at that time. Again, this is between 11 p.m. more or less and just before 6 a.m. So not a whole lot of time for an assailant to do the many things that were done, which is tie the child. Some believe the child was molested, perhaps suffocated, strangulated with the string and garrote struck hidden away and then again you have to get the materials for the note apparently the assailant did not bring his or her own ransom note get some inspiration and some ideas of what to write that takes time write it that takes time as well neatly place the note on the again this is a two and a half page note then spread the note out at the stair steps of the Ramsey's second, first, second floor staircase, and then make and uh, hide the child in a very small and isolated room in the house, which again seems to suggest familiarity with the layout of the house and comfort in looking around for a good place to hide. I mean, this takes a level of boldness and aggressiveness, very unlikely from an outside assailant that cares about his her, his or her life because it's obvious uh, they do they did they made an escape apparently so they cared about their life they cared about getting away with their crime and murder so they doesn't add up that doesn't make much sense the two doesn't match uh, in one side you have an assailant that's caring about his or her life to enough to make an escape and at the same time didn't care about his or her life because he or she struck the child with such force to make a, a very loud and unusual noise risking getting discovered and wasted time and risk the discovery by looking for a room where to hide the child and by writing such a lengthy and unnecessary note ransom note fake the ransom note that basically had no meaning when it was written apparently uh, if in fact it was written after the murder which is still not known when it was written so that's the observation i wanted to make to give me your comments on this thank you very much